Welcome everybody, I'm Olya Barr and we're very excited to be filming in the heart of New York City with our very special guest who's visiting today, Marc Antoine Barrois. And this is such a pleasure. Did I miss, I hope I didn't mispronounce it. <laughs> no, you did pronounce it well. And it's my pleasure to be there. It's my pleasure to be in New York. My pleasure to meet you finally. Finally. So, happy to be here and happy to be with you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is very, very exciting. So we're here in the heart of New York City and we're here to talk about your work, your inspiration, everything that you bring to the creative world, both couture and now the fragrance world. And of course, the latest release, which is the Ganymed Extra. So let's dive right in. Your family is in textiles, so that is your background. How does that help shape, in a way, your path in a world of couture, creation, fashion, and now fragrances? Well, my family is in textile. They're still into it, but they're not. it's not as big as it was before, but textile was very big in north of France. They got this elegance from the, the big families of the 20th centuries. My father is a teacher, so I'm not really, I did not dive into the textile from, a, when, from when I was a kid, but I don't know. It's probably something that was in my DNA. I wanted to go back in it and I, I always wanted to do fashion and to, uh, and to create things. And yes, I studied couture with great names. I started with the, the former assistant of uh, Hubert de Givenchy, Dominique Siro, then with Jean-Paul Gaultier at Hermès. So it's been the beginning of my career, working with great names and learning about really the tradition of haute couture, something that I want to, to continue now today. And I think it really helped me to understand that times has no matter and it's not trying to create fashion things, but to create timeless pieces. So I think in the perfume, in my view of seeing perfumes, it's the same thing, trying to do some modern elegance and timeless beautiful perfumes. You have definitely succeeded at that. Your work is truly, it's futuristic. It has elements of this retro woven into it. So there's this perfect balance, yet the fragrances are unlike anything else. How do you do that? Where do you draw inspiration? Where do you dip into in order to create these beauties? First, how do I do that? I think I do that with a genius, with Quentin Biche. So meeting him has been something like meeting a twin brothers where we really felt that my way of seeing couture and his way of seeing perfumes were really the same way. And, uh, and we had like so much thing in common. There was this creative osmosis. Both of us, we wanted to create things that do not exist, create things out of imagination and not in inspired by something that exists and by inspired by an, a mood board or something like that. It's just trying to be free, trying to trust each other to go in the unknown, trying to bring new things. It's how we created B683, how we created Ganymede. And now we have to think every time of what do we want to do new and what do we want to, to bring. And there's always this comparison with the previous one where people expect us on one. We play with that to try to go in other, way, in, in other ways. When we, when we launched Ensolade after Ganymede, it's really bringing some of our clients very far from what we had done before. And I think we don't want to go where, we ex where people are expecting us. You certainly have gone in a different route with Ganymede you created this other planet of a fragrance and it's truly incredible because you can immerse other people in this at least this is what i get when i smell your fragrances it's this full immersion into your world how do you even begin something like this where does it begin how do you start building this I think we get inspired by our imagination. We both of us are still kids in our heads, so yeah. it's uh, it's part of the thing. And we like to bring people in new universe, new um, like in things that we have fantasy of things we've loved. We dream of people coming into your, our universe and to make it them, their universe. We would not succeed if our clients, if my clients were not at some point making it their own. I don't have one typical client. I have clients for Ganymede, I have clients for B683, I have other type of clients for Ensolade. The clients for Ensolade can be a young man or a young woman and the same way it can be a, a very old intellectual man or a very old intellectual woman or a hippie or something like that. There's no one definition of one client. It's, I think we try to make perfumes that talk to the heart of people and where people can think, oh, that's my signature. I've, seek, I've, I've been seeking my signature for years. This one I found it and now I got it. I always say I prefer to have a few people that love my fragrance and to have like hundreds of people who like it. I always say this to anybody who's getting into fragrances and starting to explore is that there is always our particular association with it based on our memories and our perceptions and the emotions that we felt during a certain time that we encountered a particular you know, element that you can 
see and pick up on that fragrance and that makes it feel very, very special. It's truly amazing how you create because you kind of, it's almost like structuring a gown, I believe, or stru structuring considering you're in a men's fashion, which by the way, men's couture is such an underlooked category, you know, and you really zeroed in on it. So how did you choose that path? First, I'm doing male's garments at the beginning and men's couture because I thought there was something to do in this after working for women's haute couture. I thought it's something that doesn't exist for men really to have creative pieces and nowadays, like today, I do half of the pieces I do are for women. So it's uh, I don't do dress, I do only to, mostly tuxedos, but I also do tuxedos for women. And the thing about creating a garment, a very structured garment, is very rigorous. It's very mathematical in a way. It's, you have to be perfect. All the, the line needs to be perfect. It's not like with a gown where things are a bit vaporous. And uh, so I'm very perfectionist. And meeting with Quentin was meeting with another perfectionist guy. We Sometimes we take three months, four months, six months just to make some fine turning on the perfume. When I work with him, I don't want to talk about the, the ingredients we put in it because I think I'm not the expert into choosing which ingredients and which ingredients is too much or which ingredients is, is missing or anything like that. As an art director, I can tell him okay, we miss the texture or we miss something that is more chic or we miss some, maybe we, you know, the chic and the elegance is all a question of balance. You, if you do a little bit too much, you fall in bad taste in something that doesn't look like anything. So it's always finding the right balance. And me, I'm trying to express it with words and with poesy and with uh, emotions, with content. And it's the idea I want to, to bring is when, I, when I'm saying about B683 that I want it to be my signature as something that is maybe a bit more classical because I, I'm not that creative in my way of being. I create for others, but I, I like to be very simple and to be somehow in French we say passepartout with someone I, I I need to be like I cherish the fact that I can walk in the streets just by myself and enjoy the city and I don't want to to be all to have all the looks watching me because of my clothing and things but when I do create a tuxedo when I do create a coat for a client I know it's coming to me to to get something that makes him super bright so right. it depends when I create for me I create B683 when I create for for others I, I would ask Quentin to go for something more like a fantasy which Ganymede is it's a fantasy of a perfect beauty when we create our Encelade it's the fantasy of something joyful something very different so it's trying not to explain the ingredients which for me is so talking about ingredients only is something so many niche perfumers already do and uh, I feel the niche perfumery has gone into um, it went into a dead end sorry yeah. uh, with talking about only about ingredients is that ingredients bring you to some place you already know. Serge Lutens has done it very well. Um, we've had a very commercial perfumery until the 80s 90s then niche perfumery came just with ingredients and now I like to, to tell more poesy with my perfumes uh, to bring them into the future and somehow couture and, and fashion has become more and more easygoing and people are uh, less and less taking care of their garments as they would have done in the in the 19th century and 20th century it's the the clothes the, the men's clothing but as well as the women's clothing has become much more uniform when I come to New York I don't see a fashion that is much different than the one in Paris and everyone looks kind of the same so fragrance is a way for me to allow everyone to express really their personality so I have five fragrances I created five fragrances it's five type of personalities but hopefully I would do more and uh, so we know there's so many more fragrances in the on the market so everyone can find their own fragrance it's really interesting to be able to dive into this whole concept behind it and of course when two perfectionists two truly creative minds working together you know it's it must it must be really beautiful but also i've never met uh, met personally at Quentin Biche but i know his work is incredible i wear a lot of his fragrances and he is such a force in the creative world you know fragrances so working with him is that it's always kind of 50 50 or does he come with his own vision? Like, how is it to collaborate with somebody who is also as powerful as you are in his own field? It's a question of trust. It's really, I trust him. So I would sometimes on some fragrances, on some projects, I would give him like a free, like a, a white card, do whatever he wants, at least to start with whatever he wants. I usually give a direction and say, well, I'd like to go in this direction or in this direction. Then during months, he can walk by himself. And I trust the fact that 
is going to come with something that I will like. And then after we do the fine tuning or we change the direction or we, we have to make some choices, creating a fragrance is also a question of choice. The only thing we really want to do absolutely is to work only the two of us, not allowing anyone else to, to give their opinion about what we're doing at the, at the point because it's already a lot of us, uh, a lot to have the two of us. I don't want to put my ego on top of that and say, okay, we should change some things. I trust him that sometimes it needs to be like this. So right. it comes with ideas. I add some ideas sometimes, sometimes I don't, I, I don't even need to add some ideas because you really understood the, the meanings of what I wanted at the beginning. So it's it's really working the four hands, but the, the real one to create the fragments with me is Quentin. It's the one that master the fact to put ingredients together. Me, I'm just giving the intention. I love that. I love how that must be so interesting to be in a room and to hear all those conversations happening when you guys create. But let's dive in to the extra the talk about the extra it has been for quite some time everybody and i just want to say that if you still have not smelled ganymede 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 <laughs> you yeah, ganymede. are you are really behind on the whole fragrance world because it seemed to already have a cold following worldwide not just in the us and it's a fragrance unlike anything else and anybody who has fallen in love with it already has been waiting for the extra. So now that it has been launched, let's dive into it. Tell us what is different. First going to show Ganymede. When we create Ganymede, we create the fantasy of a perfect beauty, something fresh, something mineral, a mineral leather, something quite new because bringing a leather with minerality was not something really common. Indeed, as you say, it's really got its fans very quickly. And when we create an extra for us is not just changing the concentration. It's not just thinking, okay, we go, how are we going to do Ganymede with more diffusion and more powerness? It's, it's more a way, the, the same way I created, we created B683 extra after B683 is to allow the people that love Ganymede to go in another direction. We almost have the same ingredients in Ganymede as in Ganymede extra, but we, we switch the, the composition and the proportion so that the everlasting flower, the, the immortal, which is only at the end of Ganymede as a hint of something a bit salty, a bit mineral. There it comes really as a very spicy overdose of immortal at the beginning, as an, um, something very warm and uh, is something very mineral. I like to say it's an ocean blown by the wind, just perfect ocean on very clean uh, um, soil. Then Ganymede extra, the idea was to make the warm part of it something that is like the, the waves rushing on the on the rocks and on the immortal fields uh, on the shore. The darkest version of Ganymede in a way. I think it's in a way more charismatic than Ganymede, uh, more powerful. I think it's to help people that are bored of Ganymede because or not bored of Ganymede but do not smell Ganymede anymore because they've been wearing it as a signature for years. Uh, it's maybe the evening scent uh, for the one that uh, has Ganymede as a signature scent. Oh, I love that. To me, it's also almost like, almost like you caramelize the immortal flowers or like you just caramelize the whole composition because there's that layer, maybe it's that kind of myrrh and incense that's given it that licorice sweetness, but it's almost like um, it's sweeter and a, it's a bit, almost like a little boozy or a balsamic, but it has this balminess and richness. That's it, truly addictive. It has this density that do, we don't have in Ganymede. Ganymede is really, I would say, light, not in the fact that it's light and doesn't smell long and so on, but it's just a smile, yeah. something very light, despite it has a huge diffusion and it's very huge, um, <laughs> a, a huge remanence too. So it's just in the feeling, and that's the genius of Quentin, to have managed with Ganymede to create something that is light in a way, but super powerful in another way. Here we have density. Um, with the, the concentration, 40% concentration, we add to the perfume a, a very big, very high density of perfume, something that is um, really intimate, uh, very addictive and intimate. It almost feels like that closer embrace. You know, it's it's much more, in a way, private and, and it just feels like something that you want to hold close. For anyone who have not tried the original, I would certainly recommend to absolutely start with the original in order to understand the whole concept and why this is the natural kind of next thing. You created a beauty and you know, it brings me to my um, my last question, I guess. The change in the world of fashion has, has been quite evident. You know, people 
used to spend so much time dressing and putting thought into what they wear. And today, everything is moving in this kind of fast paced, very kind of more casual way. And it's happening the same with fragrances. People are kind of going for these clean fragrances for something that's more casual and easy. And sometimes they're not maybe going extra mile trying to understand the true piece of art and the true piece of work. Or simply are not aware that you can go just slightly further and then you have this whole other world of fragrances, such as fragrances like this. How, how do you see this conversation with this new generation and how to appeal to them? Well, I don't agree with everything you're saying there because I really see people going into more casual clothing, but looking for more intimate and more exclusive scents. That's what I experienced in Paris, seeing lots of, uh, uh, of people from the Gen Z fan of Ensolade or of Ganymede. We have more and more young people entering in our stores uh, in London and Paris. That makes me happy. I'm really uh, mad about this ultra fast fashion such as Shine where I, st I don't see where the world goes with that. But when it comes to fragrance, I think more and more are going into buying less but better and looking for something more unique. So it's really where I'm very confident in the future. Um, I invite everyone, um, everyone that sees this, um, these videos and uh, everyone, and uh, that's a question that has been asked to me by a journalist, but to invite people to enter in a niche perfumery or to research on such website as Twisted Lily, to search which fragrance they want to sample and to try new fragrances that are not just simply uh, the fragrances you can find in the mass market uh, thing because there are so many things to find and so many things to discover. I invite everyone to discover their own signature. It's like just crazy. Um, I think there's so many beautiful brands. It's really something we we have to do. I'm thinking press as uh, press and journalists, they have their, their role to play for that, to invite people to say, okay, uh, give it a try. It's like we don't have bodyguards at the entrance of our stores. <laughs> so you're welcome to come in a, any of, uh, of the niche perfume stores. It's like often a, a beautiful experience, at least in my stores, I try to make it the most beautiful experience as possible. More and more people since COVID try to find a quality fragrance and try to to find an experience that would bring pleasure to them and uh, it's it's fantastic because a bottle of perfume with a spray you can travel you can travel and sometimes it's inspired by memories but when when it comes to my fragrances it's you travel into an imaginary world and uh, it's just one spray so one yeah. spray and you're in a whole other planet yeah that's what i would try to do i love that i love that you brought it up because it, it truly gives you know hope that the new generation is is willing to to truly immerse into this world, world of perfume and look beyond just smelling good and really look into emotional connection to fragrances being able to transport being able to uplift yourself being able to indulge and try on these different fragrances like different personalities of different outfits and see which one is you which one resonates with you and kind of grow with them and develop with them so thank you so much for for being able you know to to kind of give us a little glimpse into your world of creation you know how are you thinking how are you feeling is there anything else you want to add to us or you want to say that we haven't touched upon not much to add but that take pleasure life is uh is made out so it's uh the idea of uh finding pleasures in, in simple things and uh, and perfume is the magical of perfumes is really that it can be as simple as entering in a store and like just spraying a new a new scent a new fragrance thank you for allowing me to to continue to create fragrances because i would not continue to create it without clients so it's we, uh it's, it's, a, it's, it's an art we do in a um, in a very generous way it's it takes time to create it takes time and energy and and creative energy but that's uh i'm happy that uh you you give back to me so much so it's uh it's super it's a two-way street you know it always a two-way street with the creator with the people who um who are purchasing this who gets experience this and for us to kind of be able to be you know these guardians of, of all this beauty and be able to translate it and being able to sit down with, with the amazing artists like you and and it's truly a pleasure it's truly an honor so thank you for um for being here and we'll see you in the next one